So iteration, uh, iteration is the outputs of one process uh, or formula going into as an in input into a next uh, similar kind of process. Uh, and that's fundamental dynamic of intelligence is uh, we learn something, we take the understanding that we have out into life. We see how it works with life and, you know, sometimes it works really well and each time it works, it comes more embedded in our understanding and validated and sometimes it uh, works sometimes, but not other times. So we start to get nuanced and we go, okay, so, you know, I have now learned a new thing to apply to life. That's when this doesn't, this thing that I learned doesn't apply and does apply or it doesn't work at all. And you trash it and you say, okay, now I got to start over again and learn how this works. Uh, so there is iteration is fundamental to the construction and uh, unfolding of intelligence itself. Uh, and what wisdom is, or wisdom is a, a main dimension of wisdom, is that this learning process doesn't stop. A lot of people uh, and groups will learn something, attach themselves to what they've learned, and then hold on to it no matter what's going on, and that's foolish. Uh, wisdom is more responsive uh, to the challenges that are that life presents to the things that we think we know. Uh, so maintaining that iterative learning process over the long haul and being conscious of how you're doing it, that's the applied mindfully part, uh, is a big part of wisdom. And because, you know, stable things can, you know, we can, we can ride along on stable situations for a long time, but when we run into things that are changing, uh, we need to change too. I mean, that's the basic, the fundamental lesson of evolution where this, you know, adaptive, uh, adaptive evolution, that whole word of adaptation from evolution. It's like the situation changes. You'd better change how you're thinking and responding and feeling to fit that. And if you can't, you get a hit from reality, a hit from, from the world around you that tries to get you to, change and the more you resist the more you get hit so being able to continually respond as things change uh, and that's calling forth your iterative responsiveness over and over you're asked to respond kind of newly in a new unit of time in a new present time uh, and you know correct your course adjust your behaviors sometimes it isn't change per se, but a uh, new dimensions of the situation, new dimensions of reality, new dimensions of yourself show up. You know, the complexity of life is almost infinite and all our understandings are built on a particular level of understanding. We've gone to a particular depth or to a particular extent and said, okay, we understand that, but there's always more deeper, more dimensions, more uh, things going on in and around a situation that can we can suddenly realize we, we learned something we went out in the world and it's like oh my god this is at play too it's not that things have changed we realize something else is going on there and that may be a problem or it may be uh, a new opportunity it's like a new direction to go say we've been looking at this totally wrong let's shift how we look at it and suddenly there's a whole pile of new things that we might do that would that would resolve it there's a kind of breakthrough uh, and so if you're going to have a wise democracy you take this this characteristic that is so clear in individual and group uh, dynamics responses to changing circumstances and deepening understandings you take that dynamic and you apply it to the whole democratic culture, the whole democratic systems. How can you set things up so that instead of just doing a democratic process uh, once as an event, you do it over and over again. So you, know, you have a, a citizen deliberative council, for example, and what comes out of that citizen deliberative council goes out into the governance and into you know, the population 
and it gets digested and used and challenged and all that. And then you do that process again so that all of those results that come from uh, impacting reality are fed back into a similar learning process. So having this happen over and over and over and over and have that be part of the culture in our uh, voting majoritarian representative you know, sort of Republican systems, the, uh, the voting is supposed to be that iterative thing. You know, we vote for a bunch of people and they do what they do and we look at how much we like or don't like that and then we do another vote. We either say, go ahead, try again, or we say, you're out, here's some new, new blood. You know, so that, uh, that feedback loop uh, is an iterative process and we're trying to intensify and upgrade and, um, and make more sophisticated. So we're not just doing voting, we're actually looking at issues over and over again and looking at our relationship to the broader, broader reality over and over again. And to the extent, if we could have all of our different processes in our, our different protocols and institutions, if that is um, intrinsic to how they operate, uh, we're starting to move towards a more wise democratic system. Uh, Multi-day open space events is one of the, my favorite because I have, I have experienced half-day open spaces and I've experienced five-day open spaces. And it's almost like a different process because open space is really good at taking a uh, subject or a field of energy and splitting it up into parts that are natural uh, and then having those parts develop further. And if you just do a half day, those parts develop and that's it. But if you do five days, those parts develop and start interacting and the, particularly the dissonances Dissonances and potential collaborations uh, get manifested and, uh, and influence each other through the iterative mul multiple days and people are sleeping on stuff and it looks different in the morning. You know, it's just like the kind of potency, transformational potency that a multi-day open space has is so different from a half day or one day open space. Uh, Annual wisdom councils, the idea of doing a wisdom council, dynamically facilitated, randomly selected people, uh, you know, do it at least every year and preferably, you know, many years uh, or many times a year, you know, quarterly or something. Uh, again, the iterative, whatever the wisdom come out council comes up with goes out into the larger population. The larger population is, you know, talking about it and following and critiquing it, whatever, pushing for it. And whatever impact that's had is going to impact the whole of society. And when you do another wisdom council, you're it's like seasoning the soup and then tasting it again, seasoning it again, tasting it again, the sense of that feedback loop. And multi-process public engagement, I have a major, major paper on my website about this. The idea that, a, uh, for example, a wisdom council could recommend some, um, some social social initiative that it doesn't know enough about to specify but it knows something like that needs to be uh, needs to be done and that then you could convene a citizen jury for example to uh, people to learn about that area and become uh, lay experts on it and, uh, and uh, make recommendations from a point of knowledge that the wisdom council didn't have that would be an example of one process feeding into another process or having a uh, lot of public, uh, you know, a lot of public people of, of ordinary citizens engage in some um, more basic, simple process like a citizen, like a um, World Cafe. Uh, so you have thousands of people participating in World Cafes over a period of six months and then among all those participants, you randomly select a bunch of people to do a, a wisdom council with. And this, and there's many, many ways for 
iteration to happen for people or ideas to fold, come out of one process and fold into another. That um, 